Hollywood, the glittering epicenter of the entertainment industry, has long been synonymous with glamour, fame, and fortune. Yet beneath its dazzling facade lies dark and scandalous secrets that have captivated the world for decades. From hidden romances and illicit affairs to industry-shaking controversies, like how Anne Miller really lost her child, or the truth behind star-crossed lovers Kim Novak and Sammy Davis Jr., or how Cary Grant's devastating loss of his mother turned out to be the biggest betrayal. Hollywood's most scandalous secrets have been the stuff of the legends. And if you want to hear all about the tea, let's delve into the shadows of Tinseltown, revealing some of the tales that the stars and studios hid from the prying eyes of the public. First on the list is Richard Burton, one of Hollywood's wildest hellraisers and a formidable acting talent. But it was his epic romance with Elizabeth Taylor that provided the world with the most delicious tabloid fodder, as a power couple who not only spawned 11 classic films together, but also created sensationalism wherever they went with their vicious fights and passionate displays of affection. Still, no matter how perfect they seemed for each other, somehow it just wasn't meant to be. Or perhaps it's the age-old adage of you lose them how you get them. The grim lovers both had it coming when Burton had an affair with another actress. No surprise there, and Taylor should have seen it coming. So, they divorced and Burton went on to marry two other women after Taylor. He did marry Taylor again and divorce her once more for the second time around, even though he proclaimed she was the one who truly owned his heart. And Elizabeth Taylor claimed that she knew this and said that in her heart she knew they would have married a third time had Burton not died. Three days before his sudden passing, Burton wrote Taylor a heart-wrenching love letter, the contents of which still remain somewhat a mystery to this day. On 1984, Burton suffered a hemorrhage and that's what ended their love affair forever. Elizabeth Taylor was heartbroken and only had Burton's more than 40 letters to accompany her, all of them overflowing with declarations of love. Elizabeth Taylor reportedly received Richard Burton's last love letter after attending his memorial service. She vaguely says that in it, he told her what he wanted, that home was where Elizabeth was and he wanted to come home. And when Taylor herself passed, it was her wish to be buried with a letter and taking the rest of the contents to her grave. It is quite sad by all accounts, especially for hopeless romantics, but it's not as heartbreaking as this next star. Ann Miller was known for being one of the best tap dancers in Hollywood, gracing the stage with the likes of Fred Astaire. Her star was shining oh so bright, but underneath this all was a secret I would not wish upon my worst enemy. The problem? Her first husband, Rhys Milner, was a total nightmare, whose temper is as outrageous as his sizable wallet. While being an heir might have won over Miller, his rage eventually led to the most dramatic moment of her life. Anne was ready to give up everything and run away and live the rest of her life with Milner. But when Anne approached Harry Cohn with her desire to leave the studio, he straight up warned her that she should not marry Rhys Milner. It might have seemed like a greedy studio advice, but the truth is Harry was so worried about her engagement that he found some of Miller's exes and brought them in to tell Anne about their horrifying experiences with a volatile Milner. Too bad for Anne as she was thinking with her heart and not her head and refused to believe these girls' claims. Eventually, she and Milner hurriedly tied the knot and within two months of being married, Anne was pregnant. Sadly, as excited as Anne was to be a mother, she did not expect Milner to show his true colors, which was a wildly jealous man who even resented Anne's spending time with her own mother and friends. Sounds narcissistic if you ask me. As predicted, she soon learned that Milner had unpredictable mood swings, ranging from aggressive to terrifyingly vicious. When she was nine months pregnant, somewhere along the way, Milner lost his temper during an argument and ended up throwing Anne down a whole flight of stairs, fracturing her back and forcing her into labor, leaving little Mary to only live for three short hours before passing. 
and adding insult to injury, the media reported a completely fabricated story and claimed that Ann Miller had been in a car accident and that tragically she had lost her baby. Speaking of babies, Hollywood is no stranger to hidden pregnancies and secret children. Loretta Young and Clark Gable met on the set of Call of the Wind. And while the pair had what seemed like a budding romance, it took a dark turn too soon. According to Young, after going on a date, Gable forced himself on her without her consent while aboard an overnight train back to Hollywood, something he sadly got away with. Soon, poor Loretta Young discovered that she was pregnant with Clark Gable's child from that awful night, and she was devastated and decided to keep the pregnancy and the baby a secret. Young gave birth to her daughter and aptly named her Judy, after St. Jude, the patron saint of desperate cases and lost causes. Rumor has it, an anonymous sender sent Gable a telegram notifying him of his daughter's birth, and he allegedly tore the notice up and wanted nothing to do with her. In fact, he never even gave them a single cent of support. In order to ensure that nobody found out about Judy's true parentage, Young placed her daughter in an orphanage and then 19 months later went back and adopted and reunited with her daughter without causing a public scandal. But as Judy grew older, this feat became harder and harder with mounting unease. Young watched as Judy grew into a spitting image of her father, with his high cheekbones, large ears, and a mischievous grin. When Judy turned seven, Young took her to a plastic surgeon to pin her ears back. After all, they were Gable's ears, and this procedure was a fix-all. But that was until the secret eventually found its way to the public, and despite Young's attempt to protect her daughter from it, Judy finally discovered the truth about her father, and her relationship with her mother was never the same again. Keeping secrets really does more damage than good, no matter what the best intentions are. Just ask Ingrid Bergman and her secret affairs. Although by the time these came to light, the actress has succumbed to breast cancer. In an interview with People, Gregory Peck confessed that he and Bergman had enjoyed a fleeting moment of pure passion on the set of 1945's Spellbound, saying, All I can say is that I had a real love for her, and I think that's where I ought to stop. I was young, she was young, and we were involved for weeks in close and intense work. And although Bergman spoke of all her ex-husbands with utter respect, and even remained close friends with Rosalini and Schmidt, the same cannot be said about Bergman's first husband, Petter Lindstrom. Years later, he still held a grudge against the wife who betrayed him and their daughter, and I honestly do not blame him. He wanted the world to know the real Bergman, and didn't care if it threw a shadow across your legacy, as seen in the biography, As Time Goes By, The Life of Ingrid Bergman by Lauren Sleamer. Lindstrom went on the record and revealed that Bergman allegedly said, I'm only interested in two kinds of people, those who can entertain me, and those who can advance my career. Lindstrom didn't hold anything back and painted a very unappealing portrait of Ingrid Bergman, the most selfish human imaginable as he condemned her for abandoning her children and for always prioritizing her career over her family, and who also had all the vices you can think of. She drank and smoked and slept around with all scores of men just to name a few. Bergman's ex-husband certainly got his petty revenge, even if the actress never lived to feel his wrath. Moving on sure is hard sometimes, but most especially when the one you love meets a tragic death. This is why 20 long years after Marilyn Monroe's demise, her ex Joe DiMaggio still sent roses to her crypt three times a week. He went on to live 36 more years after her passing, but in all that time, after all those years, he never married again. His last words in his deathbed were apparently, I'll finally get to see Marilyn. But if you're wondering about the real reason why he cannot get over the blonde bombshell, aside from the obvious reasons, was an even sadder one. Supposedly, just before that fateful night of Marilyn's overdose, they had gotten back together and even planned to remarry. How heartbreaking. But even after Marilyn Monroe's death, like the controversial star she was, more shocking revelations are discovered when in 1972, an actress named Veronica Hamill bought Marilyn's old house. She claimed that when she was renovating the home, she uncovered an extensive system of wiretaps all over. And for years, 
people had wondered if the FBI, CIA, and or the Mafia had bugged Monroe's home. It definitely looked like that, at least one of them had, but which one and for what reason, we will never know. But perhaps the most disturbing discovery of all was not in her home, but her friend's circle. And these whispers contain absolutely demented information. While countless books have been written about Marilyn Monroe, only one was penned by an old so-called friend by the name of Charles Casillo. In his book, Casillo delves into Marilyn's past and how she grew up without a father and with a schizophrenic mother. But according to Casillo, Monroe didn't just have an obsession with meeting her biological father. It was far more twisted than just an innocent daughter looking to reunite with family. But rather, as Casillo's story goes, once at a party, Monroe told him that she wanted to put on a black wig, pick up her father in a bar, and make love to him. And after the deed was done, she planned to ask him, how do you feel now that you have a daughter that you've made love to? Whether it's true or not, it's certainly downright disturbing. For other people though, they like to keep more to themselves. Such was the case for Lauren Bacall, who had been a mysterious figure throughout her life. But in her final years, she decided to start spilling the secrets and not to take them to her grave just before her 90th birthday. Lauren Bacall came to Hollywood looking for fame. Instead, she found the love of her life, Humphrey Bogart. This angered the likes of Howard Hawks, the director who discovered her as a mere model. He was so bitter that Hawks also supposedly said that Bogey fell in love with a character she played, so she had to keep playing it the rest of her life. Well, that's mean. Who knows why he was so affected by Bogart and Bacall's relationship when he also had a wife, but one can guess. At one point, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall were pretty much the most famous couple in Hollywood and they were inseparable. And woefully, after Bogart passed on, it got so horrible for Bacall and she confessed just how completely lost she was without him and would regularly wake up screaming, tormented by nightmares about him. Although it wasn't too long after Bogart's passing that her lonely heart would be mended by his friend Frank Sinatra. Supposedly, Bacall tried to resist the charming crooner, but whispers are they were already dangerously playing with fire as Bogart was diagnosed with cancer. Whichever it was, she couldn't deny the chemistry she had with Sinatra. Finally, when he proposed, they wanted to keep things quiet. However, Bacall made a mistake of telling even one friend slash agent about the engagement who then turned around and sold the story to notorious gossip columnist Luella Parsons. When the headlines read Sinatra to marry Bacall the next day, Bacall was humiliated and Sinatra was furious. He thought she'd been the one to tell the press and he immediately dumped her like a hot potato in a really cold move and didn't speak to her again until many many years later when he apologized to her and claimed that he always knew it wasn't her fault. Shocker, but sometimes when you're not meant to be, you will never be. Though this next couple really tried to go against the odds, but when you have a threat to your own life, maybe you'd think twice too. Blonde beauty Kim Novak obeyed her studio's every demand. That is until she fell deeply in love with the multi-talented entertainer Sam Davis Jr. Luckily, Novak had already caught Davis's eye too. And when they met at the party, sparks began to fly instantly with their undeniable mutual attraction. For Novak and Davis, there was no turning back. Caught up in this newfound desire, neither one of them realized just how dangerous their love could be. And for a brief while, neither of them cared about the repercussions. While their relationship was a direct defiance of the ever-powerful agent and studio head, Harry Cohn, Novak had grown tired of being constantly told what to do and wanted to follow her own heart in at least one respect, love. But both Novak and Davis had high-flying careers, and by dabbling in a forbidden romance, they risked everything. And then there was the obvious matter of race. It was a time when America still upheld segregation, and they surely tested the limits as a black man dating a white movie star. Cohn went to the mob and had Mickey Cohen deliver a chilling message to Davis's father saying, Listen, I have some terrible news for you. 
I just got a call from Chicago to hurt Sammy, with Cohen only agreeing to spare him on one condition. He went on to say, I'll give him 24 hours. Sammy has to get married to a collared girl. And just like that, Davis had no choice but to leave Novak and marry the talented black singer, Loray White. I guess love cannot conquer it all when the mafia is involved. And while there was no happily ever after for Novak and Davis, it also seems to be a chilling trend for a lot of these Hollywood stars and their children. Another example is Marion Davies, an old Hollywood starlet who carried on an infamous affair with publishing tycoon William Randolph Peirce. Davies had always been close with her nieces and nephews, but one in particular had been her favorite, her sister Rose's daughter, Patricia. No one really questioned it then, but Patricia would spend extensive time with Hearst and Davies, and Davies had left her a sizable inheritance when she passed. I suppose we all have a favorite niece or nephew, and nothing was out of the ordinary. So it wasn't until 1993 when Patricia made a deathbed confession that people even found out. She revealed to her immediate family that Davies and Hearst were, in fact, her real father and mother, not her aunt and uncle. Patricia had been born in an unnamed hospital in France sometime between 1919 and 1923, right around the time that Davies and Hearst began their decades-long affair. After Davies got pregnant, Hearst sent her to France to give birth away from the prying eyes of Hollywood gossip columnists. In a strange case of timing, Davies' sister Rose had just lost a child. So Davies gave Rose the baby and they fudged the paperwork, and that was that. Hearst supported Patricia financially throughout the years, and both Davies and Hearst confessed their secret and the circumstances of her birth to her at different times. She nearly took the knowledge to her grave, but I'm glad she was able to share what must have been burdening her to keep for years. The truth really does set you free. The same could be said when Joan Crawford passed. Her adopted brood of children seemed heartbroken but the content of her will unearths her scandalous and horrid childhood. Though she left her daughters, Cindy and Kathy, a small sum of money, she notoriously shut out her two other children entirely from an inheritance. As she wrote, It is my intention to make no provision herein for my son Christopher or my daughter Christina for reasons which are well known to them, and that reason will be made known to everyone else. Her daughter Christina released her infamous tell-all book, Mommy Dearest, letting all Crawford's dirty secrets loose in the process. The book alleges that Crawford emotionally and physically mistreated Christina and her brother Christopher. Crawford's abuse combined with her cleanliness obsession with being controlling is just the surface. Most famously, Crawford hated wire hangers and any kind of mess, and she would wake her children up in the middle of the night if they hung anything up on an ordinary hanger, or even do so much as left a crumb on the floor or a book out of order and physically punishing them because of it. But perhaps the biggest accusation of all in the aftermath of Mommy Dearest was murder. According to Christina, Joan's fourth husband, Alfred Steele, did not pass from a heart attack. The family found him at the bottom of a flight of stairs and there was suspiciously no autopsy. I'm not saying Christina said Joan did it, but by uttering, I didn't believe it was an accident. I know what mommy was capable of in a state of rage. She pretty much said that Joan did it, albeit too little too late. Which sums up our final name on the list, whose family secret is almost like one straight from a movie. When Cary Grant was just 9 years old, his mother suddenly disappeared from his life after leaving for a short trip. A short trip it proved to be not, and at first, Grant's father Elias said that his mom was just still away at a seaside resort, and for quite some time he believed it. But after some time passed, and Carrie can see his father has moved on with a new family, he dropped the bomb on him. Grant's mother had already died. This too, however, was another horrible lie. And Grant didn't discover the real story behind his mother's vanishing until he was already grown, losing out on all the years he could have had with his mother. Because when Grant was 31 years old, as his father Elias became terribly ill on his deathbed, he finally told his son the real truth. 
Grant's mother, Elsie, wasn't dead at all, and she definitely was never at a seaside resort. She had in fact been alive this whole time, locked up in a lunatic asylum for mania. Grant's father had placed her there after he didn't want to honor his vows of in sickness and in health. How messed up was that? Horrified, Grant immediately traveled to England to get his mother out of the asylum. While they were able to form a relationship, no one can ever get back all the precious moments and crucial years both have missed out on. It affected him severely and needed therapy in his adult life, and as he said, he never got over the cruel pain of being known to most people of the world by sight and by name, yet not to his own mother. What a harrowing tale that was, and without a doubt, traumatizing. Only in Hollywood, it's a world where fame and infamy often dance on the same stage, where the line between reality and fiction blurs, and where the pursuit of stardom can lead to some of the most shocking revelations in the history of the silver screen. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next one.